everyone, welcome back to my channel, Nurse Catherine here. In today's video, I will be reacting to House. Last reaction video, I did The Office, but this time I chose House, which used to be one of my favorite shows growing up. This specific episode is the case of the coma patient that House wakes up. And through this video, there are a lot of things that are done that medically are not correct. And that's what I will be breaking down in this video and teaching you what the correct way to do these things are. Before we get this reaction video started, please give this video a big thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell. Other than that, let's get into today's reaction video to House. So like I said, this is House waking up a coma patient who was severely burned, okay? And everyone's around this patient right now and doing a dressing change. So here comes House. Yeah, you can finish the sponge bath in a minute. They're just redoing his dressings. Okay, He's never out. let a doctor He's talk fine. to you like that. You to put him out. Pays you to wake him up. Why are these lights so damn bright? Secondly, do not swear in front of the patients. Okay, this is not the medical stuff, but this kind of is good bedside manner. And of course, we all know House does not have good bedside manner. Let's keep going. Thank you. Come on, I need to talk to him. House, you can't wake up a burn victim to play 20 questions. It's torture. You won't remember. He's going to it be is an torture. extraordinary. God, thing. you're good. You're putting me to sleep. I know he's going to be in pain. I know you disapprove. I'm his attending. Hold Wake on, here comes an ad. All right, let's stop there. So this patient is a burn victim, okay? They're getting fluids, everything that a burn victim probably needs to be doing. They have an IV set up. This guy takes a syringe. I don't know if he's a doctor. I don't know if he's a nurse, but takes a syringe and puts it on the port. Okay, first of all, he did not scrub the hub. Remember, you have to scrub the hub for 10 seconds. If you do not know what that means, that means you have to scrub the top of your port with an alcohol swab for 10 seconds to decrease the risk of infection. Clapses and infections in hospitals are rampant. I'm telling you guys, I have seen some scrubs some hubs not being scrubbed in the past, and it makes me cringe. It is cringe worthy to watch. So this guy in the video right now did not do that. So scrub the hub for 10 seconds. Also, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. If you notice in the line that he's injecting the patient with, like not the syringe, but in the actual IV tubing line, there is a big old chunk of air Make sure you never have air in your IV tubing. You could actually kill a patient with too much air injecting into their body. Let's keep going. Okay, secondly, <laughs> oh my word, I could just keep breaking this down. So you saw that hub. Well, he didn't have a alcohol cap on that hub. As we can see here from the patient, he has a central line in his neck. It's a double lumen, but that hub that he just injected that medication into did not have the alcohol topper on it, which is a way to decrease a collapsy event. Let's keep going. Oh my God. I'm Dr. House. <laughs> it hurts. Okay, and then I'm also really like, oh, this kills me to even see this patient doing this. Obviously, it's not real, but I'm looking at the IV tubing and none of the ports have caps on them, the alcohol impregnated caps, which you need when you are taking care of a central line. So never forget your caps. We have green ones in the hospital that I'm working in right now. I've never seen anything other than green. If you have a different color at your hospital, let me know, comment below, but have those caps on every single port on that IV tubing. Let's keep going. It's gonna get a lot worse, so answer fast. Before the accident, did you experience any numbness or tingling in your fingers? You got burnt, it's healing. I need an answer. It really hurts. Any tingling in your arms or legs? Do something, I can't. Adam, you gotta listen to me. Did you feel anything? Just 
my pants and then I don't remember it. Okay, I'm going back. This is kind of hard to watch. You never want a patient in this much paint. But going back, looking at the dressing of that central line, the dressing's not even correct. I'm not an IV team nurse, but I can change central line dressings. I have in the past. Current hospital I'm at right now, I cannot. But that doesn't have the little impregnated padding of impregnated alcohol padding around the site. That just looks like tape that was shoved on over it. Probably wasn't sterile tape. You always want a sterile dressing on your central lines. Again, because of Clabsy. Pop quiz for you. What stage burn does our patient have right now? This patient of houses, I'm gonna call it our patient. What stage burn is he experiencing just from you looking at it? Comment down below. All right, let's keep going. I'm gonna pause because I actually have a question for you. I have never seen a central line have the little port on it where you can stop and start it. I'm gonna zoom in here, right there. Do you have that on the central lines that you have ever used? I have never seen that. I also do not work in the ICU, but we didn't use those in the ER. The only time I've ever seen those ports that start and stop are on peg tubes. So let me know, is that actually a real thing? Comment down below. Hand sanitizer. All right, I'm gonna fast forward here. We're gonna go to the next section is where okay? our burn victim is woken up. Office. What are you doing? Here comes parents. You can't come in here. You're not sterile. Don't touch our son, we told you. Seriously. Millions of bacteria, microbes on you. You'll die of sepsis. If you go in. Sepsis? What sepsis? I think he's gonna wake him up again. I know he is. How? He's already you he's already gone this. too far. Oh, if I had a nickel for every time I've heard that. Relax. We Scrub the help when you're pulling out and drawing right. out your medications. Don't life. forget that too. I'm wrong. He's dead no matter what I do. Either way, how much have I really hurt them? You're not sterile. You want to kill the kid? Give me this syringe. No pain, no gain. All right, hey, his thumb. You gotta stop thumb this. Thumb is over top. Oh. All right, all right. What's that it's look like? Impressed. Yeah, sure. To me, it looks like a cigarette. I'm not bar. letting you go till you give me that syringe. What's that on his wrist? A burn. Why on his wrist? Why not on his wrist? His back, his torso, everything's a mess. Forearms are clean, except right there. So what? It's a perfect circle. So a drop of burning gasoline fell on his wrist, a screw from the ATV. <sighs> Maybe. Lighter. Sweet people get with when they smoke. So I will say, those are all things that you have to be aware of in nursing. There are a lot of, I would say, <clears throat> physiological changes, maybe not changes, but parts on the body that you can see if somebody is using drugs, burning themselves, of course, cutting themselves. And that is stuff that you cannot take lightly. Um, a lot of people, if they have one long fingernail, that is the fingernail they use to do drugs with. They scoop it up and snort it. I learned that when I was an ER nurse. So these are all things in nursing that you have to be cognizant of. And good on house for noticing that cigarette burn and then also the callousing on that middle finger. Why are you torturing him? Does your son smoke? I'd kill him. <sighs> so, he can talk to you about sex, crack, anything except cigarettes. He has a cigarette burn on his wrist. Also a fading nicotine stain between two fingers. Bad news, your son has a filthy un- So I thought it was from a lighter. I believe that is a thing that you can get from a lighter, but it's a nicotine stain. I never heard of that. 
We're all learning something new today. So nicotine stains, I had no idea. Unhealthy habit. Good news, he's trying to quit. Bad news, the quitting's killing him. Good news, I can cure him. Bad news, no, nope, that's the end of it. Quitting smoking can kill. No smoke meds or antidepressants. The crappy ones you get over the internet, loaded with whatever antidepressants they can get cheap. And since mommy and daddy obviously didn't take him to a pediatrician. That's not how you talk to patients. Sorry, I was wrong about him being depressed. Treat him. There we go. So the patient was taking antidepressants that were killing him to help him with his smoking cessation. The one thing I love about watching house clips is that you learn a lot. You can learn a lot from these episodes and I already learned a lot just from this short little clip. If you learned anything, please comment down below. That is it for today's reaction video. I hope you learned something about clapsies, about smoking, about smoking cessation, about infection prevention. If there was anything else that you noticed in this video that went wrong that I have missed, please comment that down below too. Other than that, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.